What's up everybody, it's Travis here from Travis.media. So we've been on the Linux kick the past couple of weeks with the file permissions video and the overview of the file system video. And many of you have asked for more tips. So today I wanna to share with you seven terminal or command line tips and tricks that once learned you'll use daily. They'll level up your productivity and they'll make you a better developer or Linux administrator or whatever category you fall in. So let's get started. Number one is piping. So in Unix and Linux systems, you can use a concept called piping to chain together commands. And it works from left to right by allowing the standard output of a command to be connected or passed to the standard input of the next command. So for example, you run ls on a folder and there are lots of files and lots of directories in it. But you need to find a particular one. What you can do is run ls again, and you can use this pipe symbol to pipe the output of ls. So instead of outputting the files and directories on the screen, it's gonna output that into the input of the next command. So the output of the ls is going to go into this grep command and use that to search for a particular file, like networks. Or perhaps I wanna take this list of contacts and cat it, so cat, contacts.txt and I have my list of contacts. Let's say this list is really long and I want to sort by first name. I can do cat contacts just like I did and then I can pipe that output into the input of the sort command to sort the names. Now see how this Jane Doe is listed twice? What I can do to fix that is run that command again but create a third pipe and the output of the sort is going to go into the input of this unique command and I only have one Jane Doe. And another good use case among many is to search your history for a command you ran recently that you don't want to put together to run again. Like I can do history and then grep networks. So the command I just ran to get that networks file, I can use a pipe to find that in my history. There it is. So some of these commands get complicated. You don't want to figure out all of the parameters again. Just type history and then pipe what you need to find the particular command. Number two is running multiple commands on one line or in one prompt. So we often have to run multiple commands, but do so one at a time. Like apt update, we let that run, then we do apt upgrade, or we do a make directory and then we cd into that directory on the next command. And then we create the file in the directory on the next command. Well, Linux allows us to do all of these in one command or on one line. And there are really three ways to do this. So let's say we want to CD into Etsy. And we also want to run LS once we're there. I could hit enter here and then I could run LS on the next command. Or I could do a semicolon and then LS. And I hit enter and that runs both. I'm in Etsy and I've listed all my files. Now a second way to do this and maybe a safer option is to use two ampersands. So let's go back to my home directory. So let's try that make directory example in one line. So make dir test. So we're creating a folder named test. Then we can do two ampersands to continue it and then cd into that folder and then create a file with touch called main.py. And all of this executes on one line. There's main.py. If I back out one, there's my test folder. And then the third way is to use two pipes. So cd etsy pipe pipe ls. Now why didn't that work? Well, the reason why there's three is because they operate in different ways. In the case of the semicolon, both commands run, no matter what. In the case of the two ampersands, if one passes, then it moves on to the next. So only if that first one passes, it moves on to the next. And if that passes, it moves on to the next. That's the safer option. And then the third example, when the first fails, only the second one runs. That's why this didn't work. When you use these two pipes, the ls will only run if the cd etsy fails. So in my experience, the two ampersands is the best option. The first one must pass to go on to the next. You don't want to cd into a directory if the make directory part fails. Now the third terminal tip is using the find command. You'll use this all the time. It's very useful when you're looking for files or folders. There are many files and folders on the Linux system and often you just need a command to locate them. So let me show you how this works. You can search for a file by doing find and then the location you're searching. So for all directories and subdirectories in the current folder, I'll just put a dot. And then what do I want to search for? Well, I want to search for the name and then the name, main.py. Where is this file at? It is in the test folder. You can also search for file patterns. So let's say I want to search in the Etsy folder for all files with a type of conf, C-O-N-F. I can do sudo because it's an administrative folder and find. And then I want to search in the Etsy folder and subfolders. I'm going to search by name and all files with a type of conf. And I can search by this pattern. You can also search via permissions by doing find in this folder. And instead of name, you can do perm for permissions and 664. 
and I get my main.py and items.txt. And then finally, you can search for directories or subdirectories by doing find, and let's look in the Etsy folder for a type of D, which is directory. I'm gonna run this. I'm gonna get tons of directories. And to look for a directory of a certain name, I can just add dash name and LVM. And there's Etsy LVM. So the find command is very useful, one that you'll want to remember. Number four in these command tips is command redirections. This is so useful. When we don't want the standard output shown on the screen, like if I do ls, it's gonna output that command onto the screen here. I see my three items. If we don't want that standard output shown on the screen but sent to a file instead, we can use a command redirection symbol, which is the greater than symbol. So let's revisit that find command and we'll look in Etsy for a name of all files that are .com files. And let's say instead of spitting this out on the screen, we wanna write this or redirect its output into a file, we use this greater than symbol and a file name. So compfiles.txt. And if we run it, it doesn't output to the screen, but now we have a new file. So if we cat that, we'll see that that output got written to that file. But what if I were to do echo hello to that same file? What's gonna happen? Well, it's gonna overwrite it. So this single greater than symbol is called an overwrite redirection. This file doesn't exist, it creates it. If it does exist, it overwrites what's in it. Well, if you don't wanna overwrite that file and you wanna append to it, you use two greater than symbols. So if we look at our contents of this folder, the home folder, we see four items. And we can do an ls-l. Let's say we redirect this output to a testfiles.txt file. And if we cat that, we'll see the output in the file. Well, if we want to append to this file, we're gonna use append redirection with two greater than symbols. So if we were to do like an echo hello here and put two greater than symbols in our test files file, it's gonna to append to it. So we see that appended to the bottom. So the single greater than is an overwrite redirection and a double greater than is an append redirection. And remember, by redirection, I mean redirecting the output into a file. And then finally, there's also an input, which is the less than symbol, and it can be used like this. We can say sort, the sort command, and into that sort, we want to redirect our contacts. So contacts.txt is being redirected into sort, and then that output is going to redirect to a new file called sortedcontacts.txt cat sorted, and this should be sorted. So just wanted to mention that there's also an input redirection. Now the fifth terminal command tip is to use aliases. This will speed up your workflow and make you more efficient. Now what is an alias? So if we look at our bash rc file, you'll see some aliases here. So alias ll, la, and l. It's just shorthand for a longer running command. So let's say I wanna make one to clear, like alias c equals clear. Or maybe I run sudo apt install a lot and I get sick of typing that. I can do alias install. So all I have to do is type install and it will run sudo apt install. Or how about this? Let's do alias and I'll say something like uh, sysboost, boosting my system. And I can run sudo apt update and sudo apt upgrade, put this Y flag and then sudo apt autoclean to clean up. And I don't know about you, but when I run sudo, I always type sudp, just the way my fingers hit the wrong keys. So for that, I could do alias sudp equals sudo. So if I misspell that, it still works. Or alias grp, like a lot of people try to write grep and they type grp equals grep. So you can also use aliases to fix your common misspellings. Let's try these out. And we need to run source bash rc to refresh our file. And now let's update, upgrade, and auto clean my system with sysboost. No more typing all three of those out and having to chain them together. And once that's done, I got all this text on my screen. Why not clear it with c? or alias for clear. And then instead of sudo apt install, let's just do install something like tree. And if I type ls l and I pipe it to grep, but I type grp accidentally and test, it still works. 
And that's aliasing. If you want some other great ideas for aliases, check out this one article by Red Hat. I'll put a link to it below, but there are lots of very useful commands here you might want to use to level up. Now, number six, and this really isn't for Linux terminals, but more for Mac terminals, which is a Unix terminal and can run all of these commands anyway. But on a MacBook with Touch ID, you can use that for sudo instead of having to type in your password. So when I run something with sudo and it prompts me for my password, I can touch the Touch ID and authenticate that way. And here's how to set it up with the iTerm terminal. That's what I use. Here's how to set it up. First, do a sudo vi etsy pam.d slash sudo. Punch in my password for the last time. And then at the top, you want to enter the following, auth, next, you'll enter sufficient. And then at last, you'll enter pam underscore tid dot so and save that. Next, you'll need to go up to your iTerm preferences or settings, go to advanced and do a search for sessions. And there's a setting that says allow sessions to survive after logging out and back in. So here it is right here and I'll change this to no. And I'll exit out of that and I'll restart my terminal. But let's run that sudo command again, sudo vi and hit return. Instead of getting prompted for my password, I get prompted for my fingerprint, which I can then use the touch ID and authenticate. And the seventh tip and a very helpful one is when you're running a command and let's do systemctl and let's say we wanna restart a service like UFW. When we hit enter, we realize, oh, we should have done that with sudo. Well, normally we go back and we do a sudo so, and we type it all over again. Or we do up and then we go back to the beginning and type sudo. Well, there's an easier way. Just do sudo and then two exclamation marks. Hit return and you've run that previous command with sudo. And that's it. Those are my seven Linux terminal command tips that you'll use every day and will make you more productive. If you found this helpful, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, consider doing so. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.